How close were the Germans to building the nuclear bomb? After the greatest conflict of the 20th century had ended, Werner Heisenberg was a principal scientist in the German nuclear weapons program. In the conversations between the scientists recorded by the Allies, whilst discussing the bombing of Hiroshima, Heisenberg can be heard to exclaim in disbelief, I don't believe a word of the whole thing. It was then that the Allies realized that the Germans, without having the proper knowledge, had not come close to developing their own nuclear weapons. Knowledge was just as important in those times as it is important nowadays. That's why we decided to partner up with Blinkist. In today's age, it can be hard to find the time to sit down and learn more. Because of your daily activities, you may think you don't have enough time to read a book or to develop yourself. Blinkist is the only app that takes the best insights, the need-to-know information from thousands of non-fiction books and condenses them down into just 15 minutes that you can read or listen to. As we spend a lot of time to produce our videos, Blinkist is the perfect way to learn new things. The app is straight to the point, and by using it, you will gain lots of valuable information that is necessary in today's world. Imagine being able to learn the most from a book in just 15 minutes. I personally recommend The Art of War by the ancient Chinese general Sun Tzu, or A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking. As a special offer, the first 100 people to go to Blinkist.com slash are going to get free, unlimited access for one week to try it out. You'll also get 25% off if you want the full membership, and you can cancel at any time during that period. In the 1930s, nuclear physics was a new and exciting area of scientific research and development. Nuclear fission, discovered just before the outbreak of the Second World War, opened up the possibility of splitting the atom to create an energy source, and theoretically, to create a bomb from it. This potential was understood by both the Allies and the Axis powers, and both sides invested in nuclear research facilities. Over the course of the war, the Allies' program, the Manhattan Project, made great strides, eventually creating the bombs that would be dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Their progress was driven along by the belief that the Germans were also in the process of building a nuclear weapon, and whoever built it first would be able to use it to bring an end to the war in Europe. After the surrender of Germany, the Allies took a number of German nuclear scientists into custody and had them under surveillance in Britain. One of their number, was Heisenberg. Heisenberg was one of the leading German physicists of his generation, and he had an illustrious career before the war. He studied theoretical physics in Munich in the early 1920s. He was an admirer of the work of the Danish physicist Niels Bohr, who was a pioneer in the field of atomic structure. After receiving his doctorate, Heisenberg's early academic career saw him working across various institutions in Europe and embarking on lecture tours including to the United States. He was a part of a broad international community of physicists who collaborated and shared knowledge. In 1932, he won the Nobel Prize for Physics for his work on quantum mechanics. He had been nominated by Albert Einstein. During the 1930s, Germany was quickly becoming a place where free academic inquiry was stifled, and universities were finding themselves increasingly drawn into political disputes. Many leading theoretical physicists including Bohr and Einstein were Jewish, and the field of theoretical physics was treated with some suspicion. In 1935, the chair of theoretical physics became vacant at the University of Munich. Heisenberg seems the natural candidate, but found himself the subject of strong opposition from the proponents of Deutsche Physik. The chair eventually was given to a scientist with no background in theoretical physics. It was purely a political appointment. The politicization of the scientific community would severely curtail the effectiveness of German nuclear research and have unintended consequences for its nuclear weapons program in the coming years. Amidst the uptick in anti-Semitism in 1930s Germany, up to 50% of Germany's nuclear scientists would emigrate before the war broke out. These two factors, and the subsequent conscription of scientists into the armed forces, caused what has been called a lost generation of German physicists. After many decades of experimentation and research into the nature of atoms, in 1938, German scientists would discover nuclear fission. This process is where the nucleus of the atom splits in two 
emitting an incredibly large amount of energy. The implications of such a discovery was understood immediately on both sides of the Atlantic. Not only could nuclear fission and nuclear chain reactions theoretically create an atomic weapon, it was also potentially valuable as an energy source. Early in 1939, a group of German physicists began the first Uranium Club, an informal group to explore the implications of this new discovery. The members had also informed the Ministry of Education about the potential military applications of nuclear energy. This group only lasted for several months as a number of their key members were called up for military service as the shadow of war grew over Europe. It was not long before the second Uran V reign was formed. This time, the program had formal status as a government-backed military project. The group was formed on the 1st of September 1939, the same day that Germany invaded Poland. Heisenberg was one of the scientists recruited to the project. He would later recall that at the second meeting of the club, it was agreed that atomic bombs were a theoretical possibility, but that they were at a minimum five years away from developing the bomb. Heisenberg and the other scientists of the Uren v. Rain Club were aware that the success of the nuclear program was not guaranteed and so downplayed the idea when presenting it to the government, as they did not want to be responsible for the great deployments of resources and manpower in the middle of the war if it were all for nothing. In 1942, Heisenberg gave a presentation to the ministers where he stressed the importance of nuclear power as an energy source. Later, in a meeting with Albert Speer, the Minister of Armaments, he stressed again that the development of nuclear weapons would be a costly project with no immediate results. From this date, the project would continue, but its efforts would now be directed towards energy production rather than weapons development. This was a deeply practical change of direction. By this time, the failure of the Wehrmacht to capture the oil fields in the Caucasus was leading to petrol shortages, making the idea of a new energy source an attractive prospect. Germany could not afford to put their efforts behind a weapons program that may or may not show results. For the rest of the war years, German scientific efforts were directed towards developing nuclear energy. Individual scientists headed up their own autonomous team with little coordination between the various projects. Whilst Heisenberg and his team built an experimental nuclear reactor on the outskirts of Berlin, it never became fully operational. It was dismantled by the Allies in 1945, who also captured Heisenberg in order to ascertain the extent of the German nuclear program. In recent years, scientists have examined several of the small uranium cubes that originated at Heisenberg's reactor. They found that the uranium ore used at the site was still in its natural state and had not been enriched. Without being enriched, the uranium would not be able to create and sustain the nuclear chain reaction needed to create the bomb. This shows how close, yet so far, the Germans were from creating a functional nuclear program during the war. There have been rumors and reports over the years of a possible nuclear test carried out by the Germans during the war. However, when scientists tested radioactivity levels at the purported sites, there was no evidence found of any nuclear reaction. Throughout the years of the war, the Allied nuclear weapons program, named the Manhattan Project, was driven in a large part by the fear that the Germans would be the first to develop the bomb. So why did the German nuclear program fail to materialize whilst the Manhattan Project was successful? The Manhattan Project was a highly centralized and collaborative effort from the start and had the full support and backing of the United States government and military. In contrast, the German program was highly fractured, with scientists working autonomously. Researchers discovered the existence of another experimental reactor in Germany operating separately to Heisenberg's. The researchers noted that if the German scientists had pooled their resources, they could have possibly built a functioning reactor and perhaps even created an atomic bomb. The Allies also heavily invested in attempting sabotage of the German nuclear program. At one point, 
they sent a spy to a lecture given by Heisenberg in neutral Switzerland with orders to shoot him if he implied Germany was coming close to developing a nuclear weapon. The Allies also sent sabotage teams into Norway to destroy heavy water manufacturing plants, a vital resource in building nuclear reactors. After the fall of Italy in 1943, the Manhattan Project launched the Alsos mission to find and recover as much of the German nuclear program as possible in order to stop it from falling into the hands of the Soviets. It was this mission that would end up dismantling Heisenberg's reactor as the war drew to a close. After the war, Heisenberg returned to Germany, where he remained a prominent nuclear scientist and was instrumental in developing West Germany's nuclear power plants. Despite Germany being at the forefront of nuclear and atomic research throughout the 1920s and 1930s, any efforts to build a nuclear industry or develop a nuclear weapon during the war years came to naught. So for you to learn more about other interesting events in history, considering subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell button. Special thanks to our generous Patreon supporters, and also thanks to you for watching our videos.